In today's video I'll discuss several ways of taking great photos when the clouds come over and the light is less than favourable. Well, I suppose we've all been in a situation where we've planned a photo shoot, checked the forecast and packed our photography equipment only to find the skies are dull and the light is flat. At this point, it's really tempting, isn't it, just to give up and go home, but we definitely don't want to do that because I believe there's great photos to be taken even on the most mundane of days. So today I'm looking for some examples to hopefully demonstrate that any day out with a camera is better than not going out at all. So let's keep our fingers crossed for some good photos today. A great thing to focus on when conditions are flat is detail shots and these can be found absolutely everywhere. In the woodland try looking for leaf details, fungi, lichens and bark textures. At the coast consider rock textures and sand patterns. So I think one of the best things to photograph in the woodland is textures and patterns, especially on an overcast day when we've got diffused light because the shadows get reduced and it allows us to expose a much more evenly balanced scene. Along the trunk there's various fractures through the bark which I think add a little bit of story to the image. So I've got the 70 to 300 lens on, I'm going to be zooming in, probably step back a little bit, zoom in and see if we can pick out some really interesting textures here in this amazing old tree. The good thing about woodland photography is that even when conditions are flat, we can still find directional light by how the woodland is formed. For example, there may be a break in the canopy which is backlighting your subject, so finding pockets of light can be great for adding depth to your shot. So we're all framed up, camera is on the tripod, I'm about 120 mil, zoomed right in on some of these textures here. I've got a couple of different areas that I'm picking out, which is really nice. Really focusing on the colour and these beautiful textures and the soft light that we've got. So we're going to go ahead and take this shot now. So I think one of the key things to work out in landscape photography is how to align the subject matter with the weather conditions. And I think this is going to vary from person to person, you know. How I like my photos to look will probably differ from how you like yours to look. But for me personally, the one subject I try to avoid shooting in really overcast flat light is inland vistas. So if there's a big expanse of land in the scene, I tend to find the image will lack clarity, contrast and also detail if there's no light. So this is something that I'm not that keen on. If I'm shooting a vista, I really want it to be well lit so it shows off all of those wonderful details within the landscape. So that's one thing I try to avoid. So we've moved to the coast now because I want to talk about black and white photos. After all, I think shooting in mono can be great on an overcast day. But what we need for a good black and white shot is texture and contrast and I think the coast really offers this in abundance. This place is truly stunning, a place to come to quite a bit and it's great for black and white photography. Now I haven't brought Luna with me because she is terrified of this staircase here, she actually won't go on it at all. Uh, she can see straight through it and the squares in the metal are quite large so yeah she just she won't venture down there, and I don't blame her, to be fair. But yeah, such a stunning place. Well, it's still overcast, and there's a little bit of mist out there too, which might work in our favour. Just need the tide to come in a little bit more, though, I think, for the shot I've got in mind. But yeah, stunning. So the particular shot I've got in mind for this area here, I need the sea to be a little bit higher, so I'm just waiting for the tide to come in, probably a metre or so, but that won't take long, it's uh, coming in quite rapidly. But in the meantime, I thought I'd work on this area here to see if I could make some texture or pattern type images whilst waiting. Yeah, so use that time wisely. It's still very overcast, we've even got a little bit of sea mist out there as well, which might work in our favour. But yeah, this area here looks really interesting. So. I'll see what I can come up with 
Right, let's get the camera out. So, found something quite interesting up on a cliff face there. So, I've got the 7300 lens on again. And whenever I'm looking for patterns, I'm looking for something that stands out within the landscape, something a little bit unusual, if you like. Now, I guess that could be a pattern in a rock or something that's cracked or broken in a certain way. And what I found here is a shard of the cliff face, which is broken away, but it's kind of stuck in this little reveal, if you like. Now, the light is coming from up here and it is actually trying to break through right now, which is quite interesting. So what I'm gonna try and do is put a circular polarizer on just to take some of the reflection off of the rock face. Let's see if that makes a difference. Yeah, it's helping a little bit. So something I'm always thinking about when I'm taking texture shots is not necessarily having the camera level, if that makes sense. For this type of work, yeah, quite often I'm tilting the camera left and right. That's exactly what I'm doing here because there's some strong diagonals running through the image. And what I'm trying to do is get them to run from corner to corner. So I think it helps tie the composition together. Settings wise, we're at F8, 10th of a second ISO 125, two second timer. Let's grab this and then we'll get set up for a shot down here. We're actually getting a bit of light now as well, bizarrely. So as you might be able to see, I've got my tripod pretty low down. I've got it perched on this boulder here, which is actually, it's quite stable, which is good. And I'm just waiting for the tide to come in a little bit more now, probably another 10 minutes or so before it comes up around these boulders. And then I'm gonna experiment with a couple of different shutter speeds. Maybe one to show a little bit of motion, maybe a third or a quarter of a second. And then it might do one really long exposure to smooth that water out, make a really ethereal looking shot. So yeah, two different shots really from the same composition. But I think this works well just here because we've got light coming through the cave entrance, church doors, and we can also see this vertical strata in the background too. So getting best of both worlds, I think, from this current position. It's got a bit of swell today as well. So I think when we've taken this image, we're gonna head out onto the west coast, and maybe get some wave action, which would be pretty cool. Swell's about 15 feet out west, so it should be pretty epic. So as soon as the tide is right here, we'll grab this one and we'll move on. So we've moved to a different location now to see how the waves are looking. Now, I went for a surf this morning. The waves were lovely and clean, a lot better than they are now. So instead of shooting the waves themselves, I'm going to focus on photographing this seaweed covered reef, which I think contrasts well with the red rocks we have here. Now, I think finding bright colours that contrast well is a great idea when conditions are overcast. Also, reflective surfaces such as this seaweed make the image feel like the light is better than it actually is. Let's take this image now, F10, one third of a second, ISO 125. I've touched on a few areas of landscape photography to explore in overcast conditions today, but there are many, many more. And as mentioned earlier, it's just a case of aligning the subject with the conditions. The video up here will take you to another video 
where I talk all about exposing my photos and whether or not ETTR is still a good technique to use today. If you enjoyed this video, be sure to give it a like and subscribe for further videos. If you'd like to support me further, consider checking out my online photography club, The Photographer's Clubhouse. The link for that is up here somewhere and also down in the description. Anyway, I hope to see you all again next week.